So I'm from Cincinnati, okay? And I'm a Bengals fan. So Rabbi Gershenfeld, it was tough to really get hopeful if you grew up with the Bengals in the 90s. Or even, it's, it's bad out there. But I became a Bengals fan, uh, Eagles fan when I moved to, to Philadelphia. I'm a Penna alumnus myself. And um, if you guys haven't laughed at the Bengals jokes yet, then you didn't grow up in Cincinnati, and that's okay. But um, just to give some context, as uh, that voice, that was Scott Perrin's voice coming over the loudspeakers, just some context is, uh, yes, I'm a, I'm a Moor Penn alumnus. I was a Moor Penn student. I now work for Moor Penn, and I'm the honoree Tom Steinberg's son-in-law. So there's a lot of... It's for him, I assume, right? So there's, there's a lot of unique perspectives that I've had interacting with the honoree tonight. But now that he's unofficially transitioned from board of directors to honoree, this is a roast, right? Oh, okay. Because I got some things I want to get off my chest now that you can't fire me, okay? <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> but when, when I call him Abba, when Abba and I travel around together, we travel around a lot, thank God, and whenever we're in different situations, he always puts his arm around me and s says to the person he's talking to, see, Moor student, I believe in my product, right? He married my daughter. And I still don't know if you lost a bet or something or how that, you know. But you would never let him date your daughter. I better let him date my daughter. So, <laughs> so I want to reminisce about our first date. Is it okay if I talk to my father-in-law for a second? Is that okay? I want to talk about before I went on the first date with Rivka Fox, Nee Steinberg. There was an event that night at the Steinberg apartment. There's always an event at the Steinberg apartment. Always. This event was an engagement of two Moore students, Andrew Penn and Michelle Jacobson, now Penn, and they got an engaged and were at your house. And at the time, you had Lyme disease and you were on crutches, okay? You didn't, it was a whole thing. And, uh, and, and you sat, we sat down together at the, at, the, at the engagement party and you said to me, now Rick, I've known you a very long time We've, uh, we've been around together. You've come with me on many trips. You've spoken at more events. I just want you to know that when you go out with Rivka tomorrow, if it doesn't work out, we can still be friends, and, and I will be there for you, and, and I'll still be a mentor. And I went like this. But really, I was thinking, if this doesn't work out, I'm never speaking to you again. <laughs> but the truth is, Abba, as, em as embarrassing that, as that might have been for me, you, you were 100% genuine. You, you, you meant it. You meant that if it, it didn't work out, it worked out. But if it didn't, we'd be friends forever. You would still be there for me. You'd still help me. We would still be a mentor to me. You were 100% genuine. And Abba, you're consistently genuine in every situation I've ever seen you. And I've seen a lot of different iterations of what people call Tom Steinberg, what I call Abba, from unique angles, from high up, from low down, glass of wine on the mere pested on the porch together. You're genuine in every iteration. I, I asked Rivka, Rivka speaks Hebrew. I do not speak Hebrew. Rivka speaks Hebrew. Abba also doesn't speak Hebrew. His wife speaks Hebrew. Our wives speak Hebrew, okay? I asked her, how do you say genuine in Hebrew? And she said, amiti. Amiti is how you say genuine, which means genuine comes from the same word as truth, which is emet, which is not surprising because you have a horse named emet and your horse stable man is Amitai. <laughs> and your name, your Hebrew name is Yaakov, who is, represents emet. It's not surprising that your, your drive and, and strive for truth leads you to be genuine to, in every situation in every possible business deal you've had, and you've seen a lot, in every student interaction, every time you invited somebody over to your house, always genuine. And I believe that that's why, Abba, you've had so much success familiarly with your family, with your loved ones, 
in business, with this incredible organization that you built, because you, you really meant it. You were genuine with everybody. It's amazing. So on behalf of all the students and all the alumni and all the educators and all the family, I want to thank you. That's all we can say is thank you for everything you've done, your generosity, your kindness, your smile, your love, everything. So genuine. And I want to say thank you for everybody. And you heard Harry say that you built Giant Stadium. But look around the room. Look around the world. You didn't build Giant Stadium. You built a stadium of giants. I love you. Please welcome Tom Steinberg. Thank you very much. Standing here at this podium, I'm filled with powerful and deep emotions. Before doing anything else, I would like to express my gratitude to someone who has taught Ma'or classes, who has guided students, who has entertained busload after busload of young people and hosted more meals than we will ever know. And that is my life partner, Shandel. Thank you. If it were not for Shandel's support and all that she does for our family, it would be absolutely impossible to stand here before you tonight. And I'm also very grateful to my children and their spouses who have traveled so far to be here with us tonight, and especially for the encouragement and support that they've given to me and to Ma'or. Fourteen years ago, Rabbi Gershenfeld asked me to join in an effort to create Ma'or. Little did I know at this time that he, this would turn out to be one of the life-changing, enriching, and elevating endeavors of my entire life. I cannot thank Rabbi Gershenfeld enough for his invitation to join on this journey. It's a tremendous privilege to be part of Ma'or and celebrate with you tonight some of its accomplishments. This is an extraordinary organization with extraordinary people. And at this incredible inflection point in Jewish history, it is fulfilling an extraordinary mission. If you were to ask several people what type of organization is Ma'or? What does it do? What is its mission? You would be likely to get many different answers. Some might answer that Ma'or provides sophisticated Jewish educational programming on America's leading universities. This is true. To date, Ma'or has inspired over 20,000 students at America's top academic universities to learn about and to embrace the beauty and wisdom of Judaism. Importantly, a great many of these alumni have taken up positions of responsibility in national organizations, including the OU, the Jewish National Fund, the Conference of Presidents, of major Jewish organizations, of Olami, and federations across the country. We are already seeing Ma'ora alumni making significant contributions to the next generation of Jewish leadership. Others, however, might answer our question differently and say at this time, 
where anti-Semitism is on the rise and reaching frightening levels, particularly on college campuses, Moor provides students the knowledge, the conviction, and the ability to combat ignorance and misinformation in the battle against anti-Semitism. And this is also true. Moor students are often the leaders and in the vanguard in the fight against BDS and other forms of anti-Semitism. Others may answer our question differently and state that Moor creates a community that provides a haven for Jewish students to feel connected, a welcoming place where they can safely share their Jewishness and explore and develop their Jewish identity. It is their Jewish home away from home. And this spiritual home continues to be available when they graduate and participate in programs such as Moor Manhattan and our other Moor postgraduate programs. And yet others may answer our question and say Moor is an advocate and staunch supporter of Israel, providing students with a clear understanding of the fundamental importance of the land of Israel and its central role for the Jewish people. This also is true. Moor has brought over 3,000 students to travel the length and breadth of Israel. They have been profoundly affected through learning about the relationship between Torah, Judaism, and the Jewish people. And as a result of Moor's Israel programming, there are now hundreds of Moor alumni in Israel learning, working, and even participating with the IDF. I'm a little hesitant to mention that there are even a few romantics that would tell you that Moor is simply one of the world's great matchmaking services, a far-reaching shadchan apparatus that brings together educated and idealistic people. And that, though that's not our primary goal, this is also true. There are literally hundreds of young people who have met and married fellow Jews as a direct result of Moor programming. We have with us tonight many such couples, some of which include the Beltzers, the Galstons, the Glasteins, the Gottesmans, the Levinas, the Levinsons, the Samaroffs, the Sidemans, the Webers, and the Zisholtz, all here tonight. And I would like to wish our very best to Asher Soilov and Mira Rusa, who are here with us tonight at Table 27 and are scheduled to wed under the chuppah two weeks from Thursday. Mazel tov. All of the above answers are relevant responses to our question regarding Moor's true identity. But tonight, I would like to underscore a different dimension of Moor, one that I believe is perhaps the most important, maybe the most impactful, and for me personally, the most meaningful of this incredible organization. Rabbi Shlomo Volbi, the great sage and good Jewish guide of the previous generation, in his book, Ali Shore, writes that the most powerful inner drive that a person possesses is the drive to create, to be a creator of worlds. Each of us has unique fingerprints. Each of us has our own spiritual DNA. And each of us wants to build our own very 
unique world. When young, intelligent, ambitious, and creative students arrive at college, they are eager to learn, to actualize their potential, and to build their future. But in the dizzying pace on college campuses, with its endless flow of digital information, conflicting viewpoints, complex relationships, and fleeting values, young people are asking fundamental questions. Why am I here? What is my purpose? What should I be striving for? And we must ask ourselves, where can these students turn to for answers to these fundamental questions and obtain the guiding principles on which to build a meaningful life? Judaism's values are timeless. Ma'or distills the profound teachings of the Torah and it avails it to the students in a matter manner that empowers them to build a better life, imbued with purpose, ideals, and nobility. Through this educational process, they gain the knowledge and the tools to deeply be rooted in Jewish wisdom. The Torah teaches us that from the beginning of time until the end of the world, no individual will walk the face of the earth and be exactly like you or me. Moor encourages its students to actualize the greatness that has been implanted within every individual and to create for themselves their own unique world. Almost every table in this magnificent room there are alumni whose lives have been profoundly affected by Moor, enabling them to build lives with meaning and the boundless benefits of being connected with Torah. And beyond this room, there is hardly a Jewish community in the United States that does not benefit from the significant contributions of Moor alumni. What is Moor's magic formula? This is not possible for me to say in a few short minutes. But what I can say is that it's based on the selfless dedication of Moor's educators and their families whose love, care, and sacrifice for each and every student is truly awe-inspiring. I want to thank all of the rabbis the educators, and the volunteers who I have had the honor to work with. And I also want to thank the valued board members for their wise counsel and our many donors, and particularly the Wolfson family and Olami for their unflagging support, which has sustained Moore's significant growth over the last 10 years. And then there is Deborah Kodish. With her strength of character, indefatigable determination, and unique charm, Debbie keeps Moor afloat. <laughs> Debbie, I wish I had a trophy to give to you. One way or another, she charms, she pleads, she cajoles, and she challenges each one of us to do exactly what we need to do to make Moor flourish. Thank you, Debbie, and all of the Moor staff for this magnificent dinner and all that you do throughout the year. And there is one other factor that takes Moor, in the words of Stanford Business School professor Jim Collins, from good to great. 
That is the founder of this wonderful organization. It's visionary, it's conscious, it's soul, it's leader, and it's master educator, Rabbi Gershenfeld. Rabbi Gershenfeld's teaching is truly an elevating experience. When preparing a concept, he teaches not only its basic meaning, but he presents to the student multiple dimensions, including the intellectual, the emotional, the practical, the legal, and even the metaphysical. And when students stand up and challenge Rabbi Gershenfeld and ask, from where do you know that this is true? He will quote the Torah verse from which it is derived, the Talmudic sources in which it is debated, the medieval authorities which specify its application, the halakhic legal documents in which it is encoded, and unveil the etymological root of its words. He's not done. He then shares his personal discussions and inquiries the topic with Israel's leading sages, as well in which US academic and popular publications, current day thinkers have corroborated these ideas. And finally, he will demonstrate how this concept can be applied to enhance the student's everyday life. This leaves the student intellectually clear and emotionally impassioned. Rabbi Gershenfeld's impact is not felt only by the students, but by Moor's educators, volunteers, board members, and donors. His expansive vision, profound insight, and indescribable personal example permeates all of us that are so fortunate to be in contact with him. Through this extraordinary organization, he inspires all of us to continue to create our own elevated and noble life. This is the Moor that you support. This is the Moor that is uplifting individual lives and changing the face of Judaism on campus and beyond. Thank you for joining me in the great privilege of helping our young people to build better lives for themselves and be build a better world for all of us.